here's a lesson from Drawing Textbook by Bruce McIntyre. This is lesson 12 today, which includes two steps in direction one, a pail on a three-legged stool, a rolling pin on gingerbread man, a bone in a dish, a Spanish church, and the letter L in direction five. Okay, let's get going. We start off with the two steps in direction one. Now, the thing that they suggest in the book, or Bruce suggests in the book, is to start with a point, and that's going to be the bottom of our step. And we're going to go over this way to the, whoops, sorry, that's a horrible line, to the left, and then up. And this line is going to be, we're just going to leave that drifting off there. Here we're going to go off to this way and make a vertical line there to do our first step. Our first step will go this way and this way. And then we join those. Right? These lines are all parallel and these lines are all parallel, even if they aren't very straight looking. We're going to go straight up for the next step. Draw, connect those. Again, a parallel line to this. And then we'll just say that's enough steps. And we'll draw our line down. So this part I didn't need. I'll just get rid of that real fast. And there's our top step. It's just a two-step step, which is what it said, two steps. We would add shading here. And some shading here and a little bit on the on the ground here if our light is coming from the back so that's our two steps the next one is the pail on the three-legged stool now we've done a pail and we've done a three-legged stool so we just have to combine them here we'll start with the pail which is just this with the four shortened circle there, the four shortened circle up top, for the top of the pail. We're gonna have a little bit of liquid in there, the hook for the handle. There's our pail. Give a little bit of shading here while we're at it already. Make it a little bit rounder. Okay. There's our pail. This side gets shaded too because that's on the inside. You don't see that at all. The light. Okay. Now we need to put our stool. So we're going to use a foreshortened circle to put this on our stool. There's the top of our stool. I'm going to join that part again as well. top of our stool. Our stool has some lines on it for the planks that are making it. This would have some shading from the bucket here, or our pail, and some shading here on the side. Plus we need our three legs. So here we have one, the three little peg legs, four short and circle down the bottom there, two, four short and circle there, and there's the third leg in the back there. These are all going to have some shading as well. A little more towards the top because that's under the rim of the, of the uh, stool there. There's our three leg stool. We're gonna have a little bit of shading here and here for each of the legs. Okay, that's our pail on a three leg stool. That went quickly. Now, this one is a little tricky. The ginger, the rolling pin on a gingerbread man. The rolling pin is the easy part. We've, it's like the telescope. We're drawing two parallel lines. Is our rolling pin. We have the four shortened circle here. We'll have to erase a little bit there and a four shortened circle on the back. Here's our peg for rolling there, 
and we have here a peg for rolling here. I need to erase just that little bit there. There's the peg to deal with the rolling pin there. Let me give it a little shading here. This is all shaded. And this is going to be all shaded too. This end. A little bit of shading there. You don't even see the mess I made there. A little shading here. Went a little too long with that line there. A um, little bit of shading on the bottom here. All right, so now our gingerbread man. The gingerbread man is kind of sticking up here. So here's his little body and some arms. And a round head. There's our gingerbread man, the top of him. We'll give him a nice happy face. Um, this, we can add a little bit of depth to this part over here. So you can see he's not a flat gingerbread man and also here. Actually, I drew that wrong. I'm sorry, I'm just going to erase this upper part of him. I've only done this uh, a little bit in practice. His arms have to be parallel with this, with the rolling pin. So let's try that again. We're gonna have, sorry about that everybody. The arms are parallel here. There they come, the arms and his head. Nice round head. But nice, maybe happy smile. And we have again, the arm has some depth there. And this arm over here has a bit of depth. And the body there has some depth already. All right, now we have the gingerbread man, right? Sorry about that. When we do the feet, the feet are going to be in line with this rolling pin as well. So the arms and the feet are in line. The legs have off, come off at what looks like a pretty crazy angle. You have to think, here's his body. So I'm coming through. So I'm going to have his legs go this way. Here's his body coming through here and the leg going that way. There's one leg. There's the other leg. There's a pretty fat looking leg there. All right. No, I don't like those legs at all. I'm sorry. I'm erasing a lot today. I'm out of practice, clearly. Okay. Here's the foot are parallel there. Parallel, parallel. There's the feet. Okay, good. Here's this one foot. There's the other foot. Push, the poor squashed gingerbread man. All right, that turned out okay in the end. Um, we need an extra line there, an extra line there and here to get the depth. Okay, there's our Gingerbread man, sorry about that. We can give a little bit of shading down here where he's been rolled on, so to speak, from our little roller there. Okay, have I done everything? Yep, that looks like our gingerbread man. Okay, next we had a bone in a dish. The dish we've done, which we've done quite some time ago. Again, we'll be erasing a bit more on this one because the bone has to show through. We will start off the forest shortened circle of our dish. Here's our dish coming down. This is rather a big dish. Probably no dog has a dish this big. There's the dish. And the inner part of the dish is also a foreshortened circle. And then we have the back side of the foreshortened circle of the disc of the bowl. The inside of the bowl. There we go. I can see that correctly. And we'll do some sh shading on the floor real, real fast while we're here. All right, the bone is sticking out here, so you, I'm going to be erasing some area here. But let's just draw the bone. The bone comes up, and this is what bones look like, I suppose. There is a bone. So we need to erase all of this part in here. And there's a bone. Don't know if I draw good bones at all or not. There's a few little lines there and a couple lines here, a few little lines there to the whole inside of the bowl is black, is shaded black, because that's on the inside and no lights getting to it. And on this side as well. I 
Okay. That's the, you know, the bone in the dish. Not the prettiest of dishes, but um, a little bit of shading here too. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. All right, the Spanish church starts off with our two outer lines, the outer walls of our church. So here and here. Roughly the same height because, well, it's the same height building actually. Then we're going to have a wall here. This is the side wall, which I can actually close off here too. And here we're going to have the, uh, the doorway, which is here. It's like that. We see the inside of the doorway, right? This line is roughly parallel to that one. And then we have an inside wall. Well, let's finish the roof first. Um, we actually have a pointed roof with a circular window in it. There's our circular window and you can see the depth. Let's put the windows on the side here. Here is um, one window. It's just making those parallel lines everywhere. And since they're made of clay bricks or something, then you have a much thicker looking uh, window here. This end of the roof is going to be parallel to that one, and this line here has to be parallel to that one there. We're going to draw some shingles. So some clay shingles. Obviously, these do not have to be perfect. And let's see, what am I missing? Miss, I'm missing on the inside, this line, the inside of the building, which is parallel to this one, that's going to come there. So that's there. And I'm missing the cross because, well, it is a Spanish church, so we're going to put a cross on it. If I were going to do it right, I'd make it a fancy one. They actually tilted that. I did that wrong. My apologies again. They have the cross being, of course, parallel to that line. You can draw a little. If you want, you can draw some mountains in the background too. They actually drew a lot of mountains in the background of theirs. Okay, that is our Spanish church. I suppose I need some shading on that too, don't I? Shading includes this side gets shaded. Uh, inside is kind of shaded too, but we don't need to show that. We have a path walkway here. It should be parallel to that. And let's see, I think that's the end of that. Yeah, we need to shade our windows. These are not getting any sunlight. Those there. This one is okay as it is. Okay, there is our little Spanish church. And the last one is the easiest, I think. The letter L backwards in the direction five. So you're just gonna draw a backwards little L that's gonna come down and over. And we're gonna remember all these lines are gonna be parallel. No, I don't need that one there because I'm making an L, I'm not making a step, excuse me. This one is gonna come here and I'm gonna come down to make my nice L. There's my L and it needs some thickness all these lines are the same length and they wind up being parallel. This is parallel to that one. This line is parallel to that one. This is a vertical line and this is parallel to that one. The shading includes here on this side and over here. And we can have a little bit of shading on the ground. And that is, ta-da-ta-da, ta -da, lesson number 12 from the drawing textbook.